Today, I am going over the top 10 richest NFL players who went completely broke. NFL players make millions of dollars, especially if you become a top player, you can make tens of millions of dollars or even hundreds of millions. There are some huge names on this list, so stay tuned until the end to see who lost it all. All right guys, welcome to this video. This is gonna be a very interesting one. So I have 10 players on this list. Let me know down below if I've missed any. I guarantee you there's a couple other players uh, that have went broke as well. And hey man, I guess it's hard. Once you, you went from, you know, not making anything to being a college kid to making hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. A couple cars, some jewelry, you know. Going, going bankrupt actually, when you get more money, it seems to be easier. But starting with number 10, we got Andre Ryzen. I'm, I hope I'm saying that name right. Career earnings 19.17 million. Andre was born on March 18th, 1967. He played in the NFL as a wide receiver for a lot of teams. The Indianapolis Colts, Atlanta Falcons, Cleveland Browns, Jacksonville Jaguars, Green Bay Packers, Kansas City Chiefs, Oakland Raiders. He actually also went to the CFL and played for the Toronto Argonauts. Ryzen was selected to five NFL Pro Bowls. Ryzen also won a Super Bowl with the Packers in 1997 over the New England Patriots. He even scored a 54 yard touchdown that game from Brett Favre. And also pretty cool, Ryzen also won a Grey Cup, which is the CFL's Super Bowl. But unfortunately, all that came to a quick end. Like I said earlier, the jewelry, nightclub, cars, um, also some child support doesn't help, uh, led to his bankruptcy in 2007. Not sure what he's doing nowadays, but he seemed to have a pretty decent NFL career. Now on the list, Bernie Kosar at number nine. He is one of the ones that I do know of. I, I have heard of Bernie before. His career earnings is a nice 20 mil. Bernie was a quarterback. He didn't play as, on as many teams as Ryzen, but he played for the Cleveland Browns, which is I think what he's most known for. Uh, he played for them from 85 to 93. Uh, then he played for the Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins. And he was on the Dallas Cowboys in 1993 when they won the Super Bowl. Like I said, he won a Super Bowl, he went to the Pro Bowl. He had a pretty decent career. But the problem is, of course, uh, life after football was the issue. Lost a swift 15 million to a divorce, that'll do it. Failed steakhouse, loans, uh, and he racked up almost a $20 million debt. And of course, unsettled taxes will do the thing too, almost 200 grand in that. But Bernie is gonna join this list at number nine. Number eight, we have Luther Ellis with a career earnings of 20 plus million. Luther was a defensive tackle for 10 seasons in the NFL. He was selected in the first round of the 1995 NFL Draft. He was a two-time Pro Bowler that played for the Detroit Lions and Denver Broncos. He also played as a coach later on uh, for the same college he played for, the Utah Utes, and also for Idaho, uh, both as defensive line coaches. For Ellis, he was actually very charitable. He gave to a lot of charities, um, and he adopted six children and he had five of his own already. So that's a huge household, my God. But of course he had some failed businesses. Bankruptcy came soon. But the thing is for Ellis, like I said, he became a coach. So he didn't completely, he did lose it all, but you know, being a coach obviously helped. And his son actually uh, declared for the 2024 NFL draft, which is pretty interesting. Now we have a bunch of players coming up on this list that everyone has heard of. Now we start getting into the big boy numbers. Number seven, we have Warren Sapp with career earnings 40 plus million. Warren Sapp played for 13 NFL seasons. Primarily, everyone knows with the Tampa Bay Bucks. He was selected in the first round of the 1995 NFL Draft. He made Pro Bowl appearances. All pro honors. Warren Sapp was at the top of his game. And as most know, he won a Super Bowl with the Bucks as well. This guy racked up 96.5 sacks. One of the best D tackles in the game. And as most know, he also, after football, uh, was an NFL analyst. But during his playing days, uh, again, what it seems like most as most athletes struggle with is just blowing money on crazy stuff, which is uh, what Warren did. But it looks like Sap is on the way up. He did lose a lot of money, but it looks like he is going to be a coach uh, with Deion Sanders for Colorado. When Lawrence Sapp retired, though, he <laughs> he retired uh, with 6.7 million in debt. So it seems like he's starting to get uh, it turned around now. But God, in his playing days, he did not <laughs> did not know how to handle money at all. Clinton Portis on this list at number six with career earnings of 43 plus million. As most know, he was a running back. He was drafted uh, by the Denver Broncos in the second round of the 2002 NFL Draft, but he's most known 
for playing on the Washington Redskins. Don't cancel me. He's even on the list for the 80 greatest uh, Redskins players of all time. He was an NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, two Pro Bowls, second team All-Pro, and of course had a ton of college uh, accolades and, and, and awards. After football is when it all went downhill. A bunch of failed investments, the lavish lifestyle of course, and the child support made Portis claim bankruptcy. Number five is insane. I didn't think he'd be on this list, but Lawrence Taylor with a career earning of 50 million. Although I know his background because I read one of his biographies uh, in high school, but this guy, one of the best linebackers in NFL history, you don't think they'd go down this path. 50 plus million dollars. LT was the second pick of the 1981 draft, first round, and his awards are just insane two-time Super Bowl champion, most he was the MVP, three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, NFL Rookie of the Year, I mean, eight first-team All-Pros, two second-team All-Pros, 10 Pro Bowls, he was a sack leader countless times, a part of the 1980 All-Decade team, I mean, the amount, he's, a, he's in the Ring of Honor for the Giants, I mean, the awards go on and on and on, and God, he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, Taylor dealt with a lot of drug problems uh, in his playing days. He had a lot of legal trouble and unfortunately was out of the NFL. Tax fraud, I mean, a, a way too many things to count for, uh, for Lawrence Taylor. Ultimately, left him broke. This is the one that I just found absolutely crazy. Like, I just did not see Lawrence Taylor uh, with all the money he's made and all the opportunities from to throw it away like that, but God. Number four on this list, I've never heard of Mark Brunel, but he has a career earnings of 50 plus million. He plays in the NFL for 19 seasons, most notably with the Jaguars. He was actually inducted into the Pride of Jaguars in 2013. That's insane. He was selected by Green Bay in the fifth round of the 93 NFL Draft. After being with the team for two years in Green Bay, he was traded to the Jaguars in 95. He actually helped uh, the franchise first winning record playoff berth. That is absolutely insane. Wow. At the time, the Jaguars just were an expansion team, so that's actually pretty crazy. And he was uh, he was in three Pro Bowls as well. After 2004, he left the Jaguars and played for a bunch of teams, the Redskins, the Saints, the Jets, and then he retired in 2011 with the Saints. He was a part of the team uh, who won a Super Bowl, and <laughs> he was the backup holder. Hey, man, the position. He actually, which I find this uh, crazy, uh, he lost most of his career earnings before he retired. This time it was failed uh, investments in real estate uh, in a, Whataber a Whataburger franchise. Bought way too many mansions. He's tried to offset his bankruptcy now with a medical sales job. And I think now currently he is uh, with the Detroit Lions organization as a quarterback's coach. So it seems for at least some of these guys, uh, yeah, these guys at the bottom of the list here have been um, have lost so much money, but it seems like they're starting to turn around. Some people getting back in the NFL with coaching jobs uh, and other and other uh, lucrative businesses. So that's at least promising and good good news. Number three, we have Deuce McAllister with 70 million career earnings. Deuce is a running back. He played eight seasons for the New Orleans Saints. He was selected in the first round by the Saints in 2001. And he uh, also went to two Pro Bowls in his career. So Deuce actually had a pretty, like, you know, 70 million. That's nothing not to look at. That's actually, uh, that's a lot of dough. Well, it looked like he was set uh, for life after football. Um, he also opened a dealer, uh, a Nissan dealership, which is pretty crazy. But money went down the drain uh, unfortunately after retirement. The dealership failed unfortunately. He was sued by Nissan, which is just, wow. And he was also sued uh, by a bank for not being able to pay his $1.8 million uh, dollar on a property. 70 million is an insane amount of money to lose. But again, like I said earlier in the video, when you got it, like me look right now, if I had 70 million, oh my God, that'd be insane. But when you got it, it's like, hey, you know, a property here, a Nissan dealership here. I should be fine, right? Deuce though is known as one of the uh, one of the best uh, New Orleans Saints players, um, and he also is in the New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame. I guess a good note is McAllister is currently a color commentator for the Saints uh, on radio flagship WWL AM. McAllister seems to have lost it all, but at least he's still in the NFL's eyes. Like he's still doing things for the NFL. Seventy million, bro. Holy. Number two, one of my favorite wide receivers, 
Uh, always, uh, this guy is always something else. Terrell Owens, career earnings, $80 million. Now, I did not think he'd be on this list. I see, I still to this day see him everywhere, whether it be on, you know, some NFL shows or podcasts. Tio played 15 seasons in the NFL and obviously was regarded as one of the best NFL wide receivers of all time. Uh, he currently ranks third in NFL history in career receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. That's crazy. Owens was selected in the third round of the 1996 NFL Draft by the 49ers. Owens played on the team for seven seasons until he was traded to the Eagles in 2004. Two years later, he signed with the Dallas Cowboys where he spent three seasons. I thought he, I thought he played there longer. He played uh, one season each with the Bills uh, and the Bengals. The Bengals where he played with Ocho Cinco, absolutely crazy. He also played uh, for Allen Wranglers, the Allen Wranglers Indoor Football League, which I did not know, and the Fan Controlled Football League, which I never watched. Six Pro Bowls, five first team all pro selections. Of course, he had a lot of controversy in his NFL career, as most would know. And he's also in the Hall of Fame. Owens is in the 2000s All-Decade Team, the 49ers Hall of Fame, three-time NFL receiving touchdown leader, 2001, 2002, and 2006, six-time Pro Bowler from 2000 to 2004, couple year absence and then he was back in 2007 and he's like i said five team first all pro that is insane unfortunately owens blew all his career earnings uh and eventually went broke unnecessary expensive assets including of course cars jewelry as a result owens turned broke and still had unsettled balances in terms of tax and child support always ends like that doesn't it and at number one which come on now i'm learning this with you guys at, at, at this very moment which i did not i did not think this he was going to be on this list but michael vick 116 million career earnings and i'm pretty sure he's still on um a lot of tv networks and stuff mike vick was in the nfl for 13 seasons and i mean come on he completely transformed and he was the first scrambling quarterback running quarterback he transformed the position at the time he was the first quarterback to rush for a thousand yards in a season vick was the first overall uh, selection by the Atlanta Falcons in the 2001 NFL Draft. In the six seasons he was with them, he went to three Pro Bowls and finished second in the MVP conversation. Wow. He also led the team to two playoff runs, one division title, and an NFC Championship game appearance, which is pretty huge. Unfortunately, it started to all go downhill. Everybody knows in 2007, he pled guilty to dogfighting and spent 21 months in prison. But Vic came back. Played with the Philadelphia Eagles, New York Jets, and Pittsburgh Steelers. He retired in 2017 after spending the entirety of 2016 season as a free agent. Not even a backup, man. And in 2010, he was the NFL Comeback Player of the Year, of course. He had a huge debt of $17 million, which that... Uh, led him into bankruptcy right there. The good thing about Vic, although he hit rock bottom, got out of prison, came back to the NFL, he's been on countless NFL uh, panels and TV shows and morning talk shows. So although Vic literally hit rock bottom and earned the most money on this list, he came back sort of, although Vic is number one on this list, he is like one of my favorite players of all time. I mean, he has to. But that is it for this video, guys. The top 10 NFL players who went broke. Let me know down below any notable players that were not on this list. I couldn't find any honorable mentions, but there's got to be obviously a bunch of players. So let me know down below uh, who else, who, even if they're NBA players, hell, I could do another video with every different uh, sports league, honestly. But let's stick to NFL. Let me know down below uh, which NFL player uh went broke that i missed but i hope you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like down below if you if you did um like i said i will definitely do other series like this i have a bunch of ideas in the bank so if you guys uh do like this style of video i can definitely do more that's gonna do it guys thank you for watching and see you guys in the next one see you guys later Bye. Bye.